Welcome. We're going to explore the ocean water cycle and ocean salinity. So first of all, you might ask, where does all the water come from? The primordial Earth was a globe made of magma, but actually volcanism brings water into the system and also in the atmosphere, and it made oceans to appear. Now, when we think about water, most often we talk about the water cycle. There's no obvious place to start about the water cycle, but let's start in the ocean. The ocean and the sun that shines on the ocean warms the ocean up and water evaporates out of the ocean and gets into the atmosphere. It forms clouds and winds carry the moisture from the ocean over to the land. Sometimes when the air rises over continents, over mountain ranges, clouds form, rain form and the water drops on land. Then it enters into the soil, gathers in rivers and comes right back to the ocean. So you see the water cycle connects the ocean and the land and the change in the ocean will be felt on land. But it's rather amazing to see that most of the water on our planet is in the ocean. It's actually close to 95% of the water sits in the ocean. And it's only 5% which actually makes up our fresh water or drinking water that human life depends on. On the other hand, the ocean has salty water. So where does that salt come from? Well, the rainwater washes the salt out of the rocks and brings it into the ocean. The ocean's salinity, as we say, is measured by parts per thousands. It's about 32 parts per thousand by volume compared to water, so it's slightly salty. If you are a chef and you make a noodle soup, it has about 10 parts per thousand, I and mean, it's slightly salty. I mean, it's really salty, maybe 12. But so the ocean is rather salty. For drinking water, we require that the water has less than one parts per thousand, so it's much, much less. So in some ways, the level of salt in the ocean is rather big, but it determines the physical properties. Saltier water is more dense and starts to sink to great depths. If you look at the chemicals that make up the salt, it's mostly chlorine. So as oceanographers, we just say the water is salty, it's mostly chlorine. The regional distribution of salinity depends on many things. In the tropics, we have a lot of rainfall. In deep tropics, it makes the surface waters light. While in the high latitudes, we have also a lot of rain, which makes also the salinity go low. But it's in the middle, in the hot areas around Bermuda, in the subtropical drier areas where the ocean is so warm and hot that the water evaporates and it leaves the salt behind and ocean salinity increases. These are the red regions on your graph that you find which are the high salinity region. You also see a difference between the Atlantic sector and the rest of the ocean, and that has to do with the water transport from the atmosphere, which leaves more salt behind in the Atlantic compared to the other ocean basins. Finally, salinity also determines the freezing point of water. Fresh water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, while salty ocean water freezes at minus two degrees Celsius. As the climate warms, we're seeing more evaporation and we say the water cycle intensifies. So what does that mean? Observations of ocean salinity show us that over the last 50 years, at the surface, the ocean became more salty, and in particular in those regions where it is already salty. If you go to the higher latitudes or the deep tropics, you find that the ocean salinity decreases, signaling to you that more rain is falling. So observations of salinity give you an idea how the climate has changed the distribution of the water cycle, and we can record that in the ocean salinity signal. Today, we use ocean and climate models to think about the future. Now, as the ocean warms up, also our climate model tell us that the water cycle should intensify, and what they're really also showing us, that in those regions which are already water scarce, that less evaporation that we're gonna see in the hot areas is gonna to lead to more drought, and extensive heat waves are part of it. And again, it's the ocean control that helps us to understand climate and climate change. If you look at the seasonal variability of climate, for example, as part of the El Nino Southern Oscillation phenomena, we find that changes in evaporation and changes in the wind speeds also give you regional patterns of water variability, rainfall and drought. So during El Nino cycle, we find that you have drought in Indonesia, wetter conditions around in this African continent, but you also find drought in the Indian Ocean monsoon system. So again, it's the combination of heating and cooling in ocean currents that determine the water availability also on land, also all driven out of the ocean. Water is a very critical issue for us on land. The ocean controls the water availability, and in some areas on land we have too much of it. We have floods giving us too much water and eroding our soils, but on the other hand giving us the possibility to use water to generate electricity. 
On the other times, we have too little water. Drought conditions come, food becomes slowly available, and it's an issue for food security. In general, the ocean temperatures control the availability of water because they control how much evaporation we have on the ocean and how much water is available on land. The water then affects people, but also affects the coastal zones. So what's really important for us is how the ocean water changes, how the salinity changes, and how that changes of water availability, ocean salinity, in fact, coastal and populations, because it's also the salinity which controls which types of organisms you have in the ocean. Some of them are adjusted to saline condition, many of them are adjusted to fresh conditions. And as the climate changes, you see salinity gradients moving and organisms following them. So in many ways, the ocean salinity is a critical component of the ocean system and how it supports life systems and the productivity that the ocean can support into the future.